Hello and welcome to Chai with Lakshmi. 65 years on since independence, what does it mean to manage diversity in India today? What are the new challenges? What could we be doing better? We start up a conversation with Metaculture, an organization that specializes in conflict resolution and consensus management. Ashok, given the size of India and how diverse we are culturally um, and from a social religious point of view as well, um, what does it mean to manage diversity today in, in today's context? I think India was one of the first countries that recognized the uh, importance of diversity. Maybe in the 40s or 50s we coined the phrase unity in diversity. And I think countries like the US or maybe and uh, the, Europe for instance came much later to recognizing the criticality of diversity. At one level the advantage we had was that 65 years ago we knew how important diversity and the management of diversity was. Having said that, I'm not entirely certain we've done the best job of managing this diversity. 30 to 40 years ago, there were limited resources, but there were limited number of people yes. who were vying for those resources. But with the opening up of the economy and the increasing aspirations of people, now you have, instead of say, one or two percent of the population vying for those resources, you have 20 or maybe even 40 percent vying. And the rest actually becoming extremely conscious, as they should, of, of what they're missing out on. In this kind of an environment, managing that diversity becomes the only way you can actually create not just peace and harmony, which is necessary for any society, mm -hmm. but it becomes the only way you can actually make decisions that are necessary for the country to actually move forward. For growth. For growth of any kind. Mm -hmm. Give you a, a sense. Um, land is at a premium today. Now, without land, you can't do agriculture. People can't live off the land. Uh, you can't have industry. You can't pretty much do anything without land. The same is true of water. Okay? We've reached a situation where we have diverse perspectives on how to use land or water. Mm -hmm. In other words, diversity now is not just about religion or language or about gender. It's also about basic resources without which no country, no society, no people can survive. The issue of water is going to become one of the biggest issues uh, generating conflict in the next 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. It's already started. Now, the problem with managing that diversity is very different from managing uh, the differences between Marathas and say Biharis. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So then what can we be doing? What can India be doing to manage the current you know, definition of diversity or the current scenario when it comes to diversity better? Just to make the point, we still have all those other problems with us, linguistic, religious, caste, class, they're all there. On top of it, we have the more complex ideological uh, differences in terms of what development is, what progress can look like. The only way I know that we can actually address such complex issues is through uh, what I call participatory democracy as opposed to representative democracy. Okay. I'm not saying representative democracy is passe. You need it. But democracy if defined as merely the act of going to the polls once in three or five years mm -hmm. is not going to work anymore. Mm -hmm. We need platforms to engage all sections of society so that they can feel heard, so that their perspectives can be listened to, given due weightage to, and so that when a decision is made in the larger interest of society, you have buy-in from all the key stakeholders. So I think it is about looking at mechanisms for trying to get the diversity of opinions and perspectives on different issues and, um, and taking all of those into play when it comes to decision making. What we can do to manage it better is um, better education, better understanding and also being able to bring the people from different diverse backgrounds or people with different um, interests to the table to be able to have a dialogue or to be able to have some kind of a conversation. Beth, it's been interesting what's been said about participative democracy, mm. um, inclusivity and uh, 
well, not specifically inclusive, inclusivity as a word hasn't been mentioned, but mm. to me, that's my understanding from mm. what I'm hearing mm. from all of you at Metaculture. Mm. Um, and also about dialogue. But in a country the size of India, it's hard to make everyone feel included. It's mm. hard to make everyone feel as though they've been heard. Mm. It's hard to include everyone or engage everyone in that dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Mm. It's a great question and it is a really daunting task. Government can institute processes to poll the public, to get their opinions through Gallup polls and whatnot. However, when it comes to actually the problem solving and the decision making, there needs to be critical representatives from each of the constituencies. Okay. So why, while you may not get everyone, everyone at least feels like their viewpoint has been represented at the table. And the danger of not bringing a particular constituency to the table is that they will scuttle the initiative later mm. or are more likely to do that. Absolutely. So you've got to somehow get that representation from all the different groups that may have perspectives on the particular issue in order to achieve a solution that's going to be sustainable and that won't cause protest or litigation or, or whatever later on. With organizations such as Metaculture striving to bring about participative democracy, diversity could well become the Indian democracy's biggest asset. Ours could be a country that will flourish even in the face of adversity. Something to aim for in the years to come.